Well, good morning and good afternoon and good day, everybody. Uh, I'm Mark Lobby. I'm from Casting by Veeam. And uh, Andrew Burden, the regular community leader of these meetings, uh, asked me to... Um, Ooh, asked me to take care of uh, running the meeting today. Let's see if this lets me through. Yeah. Um, and will I be able to do everything without signing in? Or I'll do this in a different browser. Let me move this to a different window. Uh, uh, uh. Move tab to new window. So you don't have to look at this while I'm doing that. So we'll, we'll just run the agenda today agenda today. However, uh, Andrew asked me to call a few things out. Let me pull up my notes for that over here on this other screen, and we will get started. <clears throat> All right. First and foremost, uh, if you haven't seen the URL, let me cut and paste it one more time because a few more people have joined since I started. Uh, welcome to today, the 18th of October. Uh, we're just about three weeks out from KubeCon, uh, Chicago, North America, and this is the KubeVert meeting. Um, let's just start off with the basic introductions. I think I've introduced myself. Uh, I will be at Chicago. I will be at the KubeVert community meeting, and we will uh, show where that is in just a moment when we get to the events calendar. But uh, welcome. If you're brand new here, uh, we're an open community. Uh, we'd love for you to go through all of these uh, participatory activities, such as adding your organization, following us on Twitter, uh, the the um, Ubert account, uh, joining to the community, joining to the mailing list, etc., and joining as a GitHub project member. If there's anybody new to the community today, please, if you're if you're so inclined, either uh, pipe up and introduce yourself either through chat or by voice. And uh, we would, yeah, let me try to take care of this while we're talking, um, because that is going to be annoying. But uh, if there's anybody new, please introduce yourself. And if you'll also be so kind, I will also try to conclude this login right now. All right, looks like we have nobody new. Just give me one more moment and I'll finish uh, authenticating, I hope. <laughs> if not, I'll try to muddle through it. Uh... So audibly, you may be able to discern my keystrokes and figure out my password. <laughs> we need AI to um, take that on next, I think. All right, so here, let's try this. Good, I'm logged in. All right, therefore I can reload this and we should be fine. All right, sorry about that folks. All right, moving on. Uh, okay, so let's take a look uh, first and foremost at taking a look at the uh, release schedule. I'll make this a little bit smaller so that we can all see. Um, we are in October, and it looks like everything finished up with the feature freeze for 1.1, one, one. and therefore we're working towards release candidate zero now uh, with these tags. So if you are working on the project, uh, please make sure you are adopting these things, and if not, uh, hold off or you know take care of things in, in an appropriate branch and do not merge at this point in time. Although I am not the authority on this, uh, if you are a project member or have those questions, please raise them uh, either on the mailing list or potentially uh, in the Slack instance in, in the Kubernetes uh, Slack instance, and we'll get those uh, answered. Apologies for me not being the expert on that. But let me know if there are any questions here. This is where we are on, on preparing for the 1.1 release. And the goal is, yes, to try to make this coincide with uh, KubeCon, of course, in about three weeks. Uh, we'll see if we make it. All right. No questions there. I will move up to taking a look at the CFP and event schedule. And so uh, I believe Andrew updated this a tiny bit to say with, with some more updates on scale. 
uh, in March. Um, we have community days coming up in San Pao, Oslo, and yes, next year's KubeCon will be in Paris. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to have definitive CubeVert sessions at KubeCon in about three weeks in Chicago. And uh, there is going to be one, I think, um, session in the main program for we release CubeVert 1.0. And the project will be in the, we'll have a booth in the project update, uh, in the project pavilion. There'll be a slight update in the keynote. And uh, of course, on Monday, which is kind of like the colo and the vendor day and uh, and such, um, there will be a two-hour community meeting. So please join us there. I'll be there. Andrew will be there. Uh, I'm sure quite a few other people maybe on this call will be there. So um, I was there at the last one. It was really good to see a lot of people together and understand where people are in their journey and what they're looking for. Um, and it looks like they'll even try to, uh, Andrew will try to even probably live stream this. Okay. Um, so yes, please, please come to that meeting. And then the next one is set up for November in Italy. Uh, ooh, next week. And uh, I'm not sure who's going to be presenting this one. Let's see if this gives any quick idea. Uh, who's the speaker? Oh, that looks like Daniel, uh, if I'm not mistaken. All right, good. Well, good. Get to see Daniel in Italy. I, I hope I'm right on that. I hope I'm not making a mistake. But yes, uh, as always, if you're interested in speaking on CubeBird and representing the community at any of these or other events, or whether, please, please uh, submit for the call for papers or, or make a lightning session on things like that, because we're always trying to spread the word. All right, uh, let's see. Yes, we'd like to highlight scale and KubeCon. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, oh yeah, if you need any help or want to brainstorm ideas, uh, please reach out to Andrew. All right, uh, Orel has a question. Is it possible to talk for a second about Rootful VM mailing list thread? We will prioritize that right to the top uh, for you, Orel. I think you have that here. Yes, this one. All right. And we're, we're pretty much there. I just want to take one more, take a look at uh, Andrew's notes to make sure I'm not missing anything else on, on the discussion here. Just give me one more second, and then we will cut over to that. Yep, yep, yep. Ready for triage. Yeah, yeah. OK. OK. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll address this one last thing I request after Oral's thing. So let me uh, A, B, release notes. Best. All right. Well, then let's let's continue on to now kind of the more open floor and scheduled agenda topics. Uh, Oral, would you be so kind as to drop the uh, URL in chat for the mailing list thread that you're discussing? Or if you wish... Uh, why don't you unmute and I'm happy to let you uh, share the screen if you want to bring it up that way. Sure, I will share my screen real quick. You stop sharing. Thank you for letting me speak first. I really need to drop not soon. Can you see my screen? I'm not sure that it is. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Cool, thank you. So yesterday I created a mailing list thread, or oh, two days ago, actually, mm -hmm. I created a mailing list thread about dropping support for rootful VMs. Uh, rootful VMs uh, are less secure than non-root VMs and are posing a maintenance burden on us. And as I've written in the uh, mailing list thread, they are not regularly tested. Uh, when people post PRs to Kubert Kubert. So there was an idea to remove or drop support for them. And we wanted people's opinions regarding whether it affects them or whether they object. And uh, I just saw half an hour ago that the person from Google wrote that uh, they 
need this support for some reason. Um, and if any anyone wants to join the discussion, please do. Please tell us your opinion if you think we should keep this or not. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And uh, if you'd be so kind or else to drop that uh, URL to the email thread, I mean, the uh, mailing list group thread, I'd appreciate it. Sure, sure. Yeah, thank you. All right, just going in order on the agenda, uh, Daniel, I don't think I see Daniel here. Yes, he said he's unable to attend. Uh, he's saying that the flake label is now applicable to the whole Qbert organization per commenting with slash kind space Blake on a pull requester issue. Okay, that's good. So that means that we've just got it across the entire project for consistency. Uh, I imagine we're not talking flake uh, formatting or anything like that, but we're talking about flaky tests. Um, therefore, we understand when they uh, have non-deterministic outcomes during testing on all the on all the automation, as well as all the manual testing that's done when it's kicked off, probably on a check-in. Okay. Um, Daniel Burt, Andrew said, FYI, for your information, design proposal updates. All right. To support ISO emulator thread with SMT enabled nodes. All right, let's take a quick peek at this. I'm Avi. Hey, got the same last name as I do. All right. Uh, As opposed to I can also talk about it if you oh, yeah please please if you want me to. Yes, yes. And actually I'll share I'll share my screen again because I just thank realized. you. Yeah. Uh, where did oh yeah, here we go. Share screen. This desktop. Okay. Go for it, or I'll I'll start at the top. Um so this design proposal is uh, to support uh, high performance virtual machines like uh, virtual machines that uses DPDK or real time support. Oh, wow. When you use these kinds of uh, virtual machines, uh, you need sometimes dedicated uh, CPU placement and isolation of the emulator thread. And also something that we use uh, on the Kubelet CPU manager side is a uh, C CPU manager policy that is called uh, um, allocate full PCPUs or something along those lines. And what it basically does is it Kubelet only starts pods that has an even number of CPUs of dedicated CPU requests. And if you request an odd number of CPUs, then Kubelet just reject this pod and doesn't start it, and you have no option to start it. So what this uh, design proposal proposes is to add an annotation that will tell Qbert when you are using the sum of requirements that these uh, VMs want, like dedicated CPU placement and isolate emulator thread, you could also start them on nodes that has um, hyper-threading or SMT enabled. Excellent. Thank you. Any questions or comments uh, while we're on this topic? Otherwise, I will start to move on. Moving on. OK, uh, next design proposal update. Uh, this one looks merged. Default virtualization storage class. All right, let's see what's of interest here. Specific set of backend storage parameters for provisioning VM disks. Yeah, I'm not sure how this ended up here. It got merged earlier this week. Uh, maybe a leftover? I see Mike is here. Uh... Yeah, I didn't add it, um, but it's uh, been approved and we're working on the implementation right now.
Cool. Uh, is there anything else you can help us with a summary on what these parameters are? Uh, yeah, so it's basically um, a way for admins to annotate a storage class to say, this is the storage class you should use for um, your virtualization workloads um, because there are certain issues, particularly with Windows VMs, that some uh, configurations of uh, like our our uh, OCS or, or Rook Ceph, uh provisioner um, was causing problems with Windows VM. So we had to create a, spe a, special, a special storage class with parameters to handle that. Yeah, ambiguity is not good in those situations, I see. Right, so um, yeah, this is, uh, and and this is, yeah, this will help us for the cases where, um, you know, our data volume API, uh, you can leave out the storage class and we'll just kind of choose the best one in that case. And we'll choose the virtualization storage class if it exists or is annotated correctly. Excellent. Uh, you're getting some positive feedback in the chat. All right. Thank you, Mike. Uh, let's move on to the next. Okay. Edward, networking binding plugins update. The API, I won't just read this to you. <laughs> Hi, yes. Uh, so I don't have anything special except what I wrote here. Uh, for the last, for the version that was branched yesterday or this morning, I don't know when it happened. Um, we have, uh, we have, we can register uh, uh, binding plugin use uh, and and settle the network attachment de uh, definition, and and we had it already the uh, reference to a sidecar image to be used, and currently we are working on uh, a specific binding which is pasty that will that we should finish in the coming week or two. That's the update. Excellent. Is there um, any documentation or 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 uh, pull request that you want to reference for this, in case people uh, have more questions or inf information? Yeah, I will add. I will add the link to the. There is a document uh, at the moment. It's a Google document, and uh -huh. we are. There is a. I'm planning to move it to a to a PR as an enhancement, as a formal enhancement, uh, and I will work on it, and then. Hopefully, next meeting or one after we'll have it already. I will I will add the link. Thank you, Edward. Excellent. Cool. Okay. Moving on, and I'll 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 try to do this one. So <clears throat> let me bring up Andrew's notes again. So he is asking for help on updating the release notes process, not the release notes themselves, but the actual process. And this requires some Go uh, skills, Go Um, So let me also read a little bit more about what he described this as. He can't really gauge how much work is required, but he doesn't have any time to learn how to code Go before 1.1. And, and I guess this is a 1.1 deliverable goal because uh, he's primarily out of the office until that point. So uh, info. Any info should be on this issue, should be thread pasted in, but questions can be directed to him or to David on this issue. And if anybody takes it on, he, you'll have Andrew's undying gratitude, but also probably uh, not an impact on the release notes and the release of 1.1 as well. Let me see. All right, let's 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 take a look at this. Yeah, so he's asking for comments or help on, on this issue. Let's take a look at it, and then we'll see the additional context that he has there. All right, larger release notes per release since, yes, the cadence is slowing down, therefore, bigger bigger payloads. More, more deltas, more change, more documentation, more release notes. Uh, automatically filter... We have this actually for our project that just uh, got accepted by the CNCF as sandbox. We're we're trying to mature our process here too. <laughs> Maybe I'll try to take this on, but I, I also don't have much Go skills right now. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. 
So yeah, it's a manual one to two week process. Here's the PR. He has a script that takes the release notes and collates them from the relevant PRs. And yes, David, that's the David he was referring to. David and Andrew are the two that you can ask her, her or actually just ask on this, this PR. I mean, this, it, this issue. Uh, and yes, there's historical reference. And here's a script. Da, da, da. And he, I think he listed that in there, but let's see what this additional context is. Yeah. All right. Well, anybody with uh, some time and requisite Go skills and uh, ability to commit into the repo, uh, your help would be appreciated. Um. All right, we will move on from there. I don't think I did much of, all right. Uh, all right, so open floor. Looks like uh, Edward might have uh, some things. Edward, if you want to just yeah, undo yeah. and discuss. Will... But... Yes, I just remember that I forgot to add one thing here is there is a weekly Virt API meeting. I think it's on, um, let me check is on on Tuesdays at the same hour as this meeting. Yeah, and, okay. uh, let me, uh, I can share my calendar. I think I still have it on there uh, just to show it. But yes, I think that, is that tomorrow or no? Or that, that was, was yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah, so, so go ahead, please. Yeah, I just wanted to remind everyone that this, this exists and I do encourage you to come, at least the contributors that are uh, uh, contributing uh, changes to the API. Uh, they should revisit it at, at least when they, when they post uh, a PR that changes something in the API. It will be nice if they will uh, come over and, uh, and raise their, uh, their change. Uh, currently, the the discussion are, are there is how to allow uh, upgrades and backward compatibility and uh, not uh, break things. Uh, it should, I think, in the in the coming weeks, it should result in uh, in some docu document. There is already a design proposal to to have a structure of. Of what to care about in this regard, but uh, there will also be hopefully there will be a, some guidance of how to how to add fields um, to a stable um, objects, what to do or not to do, um, stuff like that. I guess like some kind of policy. Yeah, I imagine any API changes should be discussed. <laughs> yes, now now they are uh, now the what happens today is that they are discussed only at the specific six like uh, mm -hmm. or at a specific group that worked on it. They are not really discussed as, as a cross sig uh, cross sig project. And there is also uh, not, it's not so clear what are the rules of engagement. So this tries to formalize it a little bit, uh, mix, uh, organize things. So Edward and Mike, uh, with the 1.0 release, I know that you're tending towards stabilizing APIs. Is that is there a more formal proposal of that? And and I imagine this SIG is evidence of how to, how to uh, make that a more stable, process is that the goal here you mean the existing PR, right yeah yes i think i think that it started from there and that one is like uh, uh, emphasizing the high level points that needs to be uh, looked at or how to how to work this through as a, maybe as a flow or as or the the big points but in some what the discussions are 
currently also getting into the some details like um, I think uh, for the last two meetings uh, the, uh, they went over the um, examples of changes to the API and if they and we discuss them like is it good what are the problems uh, we raised the the we discussed about alpha and beta and GA things. When can we things can change, things like that. There's, I think, the discussion in as as I said before, the discussion should be summarized in the end to some uh, some guidance, like uh, maybe a, another the proposal or a more detailed one. Um, that's it. So if someone is interested in this stuff or they want to ask a question, uh, that's a good place to to hang on. Awesome. Thank you. All right, let's take a look at the pull requests uh, in general. Um, I believe Andrew mentioned that Images and RPMs bump images and fix no op unit tests he has reviewed and taken care of. But let's see if there's anything here that's not been assigned. Split VMI configuration test. Looks like Daniel is on this one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Daniel's all over that one. Um, Andrew mentioned this one. Let me just see, because he mentioned anything that he marked with A, B next to it, then he's added, he's added, oh, he's already triaged it, I guess, okay. Um, whoops. So the these two, and uh, looks like these two have been triaged as well. Then looks like this one doesn't have any assignee and neither does this, but I think if it's more than a week, and again, Daniel's on this one, so I think we can let that one go. All right, let's take a look at this one and let's take a look at this one. This doesn't look like a general one. It looks like a more already taken care of notification of, all right, QVert to verify the patch is reasonable to test. Yeah, this isn't basically, it, that one doesn't look like it really needs to be triaged in my opinion. And looks like we've got reviewers already assigned on this one. So this one's being addressed as well. Yeah definitely being addressed. Okay, good. Um, then I think, and if it's more than one week ago, I'm going to punt back, but I think we have addressed anything that needed triage. Yeah, yeah, we have. All right, good. Unless somebody sees something that I don't see, but I think we have done this part. Um, okay, actually, I I am mistaken. Just because they've been reviewed doesn't mean that they don't need help. All right, so let's go take a look at uh, these specific ones. I think I misinterpreted that. My apologies. Okay. Um, looks like it needs review. He's mentioned a number of people. Oh, this has been approved. Reviewers are still going on. All right, this one's this one's definitely in process. Let's take a look at no op tests. Failed tests. This one's in process too. Uh, I don't see that it needs to be triaged further, uh, unless they're looking for more people to help with testing on it. Let's take a look at this one. Looks like it's under discussion, so 
for adding a metric. Okay, and fix. Yeah, this is definitely also being managed, so does not need to be triaged. Okay, those pull requests have been attended to as far as I can tell. All right, let's take a look. Oh, did we not discuss this one, uh, Edward? Which is it? Which one is it? Oh no, no, this was uh, Orel's. This was Orel's rootless. We talked um, about it. He he solicited input. We nobody. There was no actual discussion. If we wanted to have that, it's fine. Uh, if you're interested in that, this is what we can do right now. Although I can't contribute much to the discussion, but certainly, um, let me bring this up and let's discuss. Yes, this was the topic Oral raised a little bit earlier. Uh, so we had at least one community member weigh in with a valid non-expiring concern of, please don't take this away. Mm -hmm. I wonder, because right now you still have to opt in, right, uh, Eddie? Like it's not something where somebody can create a rootful VM accidentally. Yeah, it's secure by default. Um, you have to Basically, opt. Yeah, if the cluster admin has to opt in to, to allowing rootful VMs to happen at all, then that's the cluster admin's choice. So I wonder if there's, you know, past that, you know, benchmark, if there's anything we would want to do. AKA, I'm kind of flying in the face of the whole discussion and saying, perhaps we do nothing and leave it as is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that might be the appropriate response on to to uh, Zhang here about it's, it's not the default case, so therefore um, you have to opt in on this. So it just it may just be misunderstanding what the current state is and what the default state is, that's all. But you wanted to remove it, uh, so it's not clear. I think the email itself, the message was to remove the root because in the code base, we have a lot of uh, mm -hmm. quotations about it. So maybe that's not understood. The, the current situation is this is the rootless is the default, right? Rootful is requires opt-in. So then this is my interpretation that they even said we want to remove the code that handles rootful. That's correct. That's what the proposal is. So, so if, if the the feedback was that the, it is used. And they I think they uh, it we have been uh, the they asked to to give more time to to resolve the root requirements, like to for them maybe to reduce the privileges. That's the last sentence, I think. Right. So so let me repeat my question a minute ago, Eddie. Um, currently, on a default cluster, the default is rootless. Is a user able to create a root VM? without the admin's consent or knowledge. OK, well, it sounds like you may not be the, the person to ask on that front. I should probably go dig into that, um, because I think a reasonable response would be to make root list VMs the default and root full VMs only allowed if the admin says so. 
isn't that the state right now like i think yeah. it is and that's what yeah. yeah yeah that's the state of things now you have to have the root feature gate enabled and then it will um yeah it will there i mean there is a lot of i think there is a lot of places in the code where we check to see if that feature gate's enabled and there's definitely like you know getting rid of the that feature gate would they'll simplify code but i don't i don't know it's already there and i, I don't know i just don't see um, a huge cost of, of keeping it personally. So the, I think the cost is, I can I can share what example of the cost. The cost is that if we work on a different feature now, something new, if, if we need to consider the root case, then it may complicate the new features. That's the cost especially if we're not testing it. Yeah, first of all, we are not testing. So even if if the the notion is that it is supported, actually the fact that it is not tested, it it implies it is not supported. So it's very odd. Like, yeah. yeah. And I, I believe this this person doesn't understand the default case, which is um yeah so I, I think it's just uh, clarifying uh their understanding here for I don't really actually see that this is an objection. Oh, oh it is. It's it's it saying is, it there is. are cases where rootless doesn't work. That's her, she she leads with that. Yeah, there are definitely um, cases. Well, yeah, the, I I think that there are cases where rootless yeah just won't work. There are cases where it's just um, yeah. Oh, I see. I see. I apologize. Yeah, there. Um, So yeah, especially with storage, um, they're often weird provisioners or yeah, yeah, or um, I understand. <laughs> yeah, or even some like uh, yeah, where it comes to like devices, you like a, a the Kubernetes admin may have to make changes to like the node that they don't have permission to, and you know they're just okay with with having the run as root, but. Well, then, uh, for lack of a better, uh, this was, I'll try to summarize. This was this. Community meeting. We understand where this may still be needed. However, if I, and please help me uh, summarize this properly. This isn't consistently tested, is that correct? Or it's not exhaustively tested? We or... we, we don't have uh, test lanes running in root mode. It is not tested. It is not tested. That's all there is to it, right? Um, not a sustainable model. Is that fair enough to say? I hope. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so if we if we just come back and zoom out to twenty thousand foot view, uh, or I'll proposed it and trolled for opinions on you know if you have concerns please weigh in. Somebody has a concern and weighed in. Uh, so and and I think we're we're acknowledging that you know verbally here in this meeting that I think we have enough of a consensus to say we probably shouldn't move forward with this with removing it because we don't have a plan B for dropping support for very valid things like storage. Okay. Uh, so, all right. Does that mean further discussion required? 
I think so. Cause I, I don't think that we have a hard and fast decision at this point, except to, to say that proceeding, you know, blindly with this plan is probably not an ideal outcome. So one thought I had is um, what Eddie's saying. So they, they're implementing a new feature and they have to take rootful VMs into account. What if, I mean, what if you don't? And just as the need grows for this feature in rootful mode, then we can just have people contribute the missing pieces. I mean, if it works for non-root, it, it should be possible to carve it in a way that works for root. I mean, the, the concern is that if, if somebody's, if, if we're deliberately breaking or, or inadvertently breaking code by a deliberate pattern because we don't, we're not testing it, if somebody then corrects it and submits a patch, we can't tell if the patch works or not because we're not testing it. So I think we're in a catch 22 mode is we either need to commit to fully testing root at least once somehow, some way, or or we just, you know, like you're saying, it's best effort. We really can't uh, control what happens if we're not testing it. And we're, by the way, we're not testing it because of resources and priority. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. It's a tough one. Um, yeah, let's just go with this message and um, we'll see how we can proceed. So is the outcome of this that when there is a need to investigate uh, how to move, uh, how to work on making rootless, uh, thing, uh, rootful existing stuff into rootless? Are there, do we have these scenarios or not? I'm not clear if we are. Could we you have repeat? Them. To, to, I, I got tangled in your phrasing of it. Yeah, sorry. What, what was your question? So if I understood correctly, the, the claim is that there are scenarios that require root food, right? That's correct. We, yeah. So uh, who owns these scenarios? Like who is using them? Do we, do we have, is this tested maybe in other project, like uh, maybe other CD, uh, CDI or, or, are there features that we have now in in other parts that require really rootful? Uh, um, it's not tested or exercised in any kubevert or CNCF project at this point. But the the reality is we have people we don't even know about using kubevert, and what whatever they're up to, we we can't know or control. And, and so that you know and the person from Google is one example of somebody coming out of the shadows and saying, Hey, wait, we're using this. Hold up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, th th there is nothing that we can do. Like we can, we don't have any action item that we can take a, a specific thing and, and say that we need to currently it works only with rootful and we, we want to move it to rootless. We don't have any such item. That's correct. There's nothing on our immediate docket where we as Kubert have features that require root that we can't resolve. Okay, so so how about the middle ground? Like the the response that came was that they are not saying that they will not um, that they are rejecting the idea of uh, removing it. They only said that they need more time. This is my interpretation. At least this is what I read. In the, in the answer. If, if it's, this is the case, then maybe we should just give that time, like saying that uh, next version or uh, the next in the 1.2 or in 1.3 will only add warnings. And in 1.4 or something like that, we will just remove it because we are not not able to to continue support for it. Is I'm comfortable possible? with that. I, I like that. And the other thing that we should be, we should be doing that anyway, Eddie, because not everybody's paying attention to the community meeting or the mailing list. And 
or, you know, reads the release notes or whatever. And so the only warning they're going to get is when they issue a start VM command and get a deprecation warning in their face at that time. And that may be the only notification they have that, oops, maybe I need to take action. And so we do need a, a deprecation period where the software honors the mode, at, but still complains loudly about it. Yeah. So I think just maybe we should do that here. But I'm already I'm already a little bit concerned about the fact that I I know that we are when we add now things, we don't take that into account. So there may be scenarios where we add add uh, features and we don't even look at the part of the it may break in if you run it with root like that's it's even maybe even now it's broken so that's that's a, a fair warning that should exist agreed <laughs> okay looks like the conversation will continue but i will post this now unless anybody else has got some uh wordsmithing or other comments on it going once twice posted okay thank you everybody All right. Move Thanks, in. Mark, for moderating that. You're you're welcome. I'm glad to actually be able to help. Uh, bug scrub. All right. Do do do. Last month. Last month. All right. Let's only go back. Uh, to the previous meeting, so there. This week, this, 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 and this. You see how I, I work. I, I have a multitude of tabs. I'm a tab hog. All right, let's start with this one. Um, troubleshooting 1.0. On Kubernetes one two three. I don't know if we can assign this to anybody, or any volunteers. Yeah, well, you can assign it to me. Uh, in general, we are first of all we have a problem with the uh, support because they are using a very um, one twenty three Kubernetes, and we are supporting. Um, I don't think we are supporting it anymore. And mm. uh, and in addition, uh, they they are talking about ah is this the same thing or not? Maybe I'm uh, I'm talking about the wrong thing here. Yes, I think I'm talking about the wrong thing. There there was a pasty thing that that's not it. Oh okay. Sorry. I'm just going to assign issues, unfortunately. Yeah, but still the Kubernetes looks here like it's old. One twenty three. Yeah. But maybe someone can help him. I don't know. Okay. We took a look, at least. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, this is really just a question. Oh, for a GPU pass through. I see. I do not know how to do that. <laughs> Can you please CC Vladek Romanovsky? I think it's slash CC space Vladek, right? Uh, thank you. And is it then? Uh, the Roman, so I think. Yeah, let me get R O M A N. There he is, this one, correct? This person? Yes, Vladek. that guy. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
VM boot breaks SE Linux. Yikes. Uh, so this is QVert on Debian 12 bare metal. Can you CC Jed Lejean? J L E J. J L E. Yeah, you need to do the at to make it some. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's J E A N. J E A N. That's right. He's John Edward on here. Exactly. <laughs> that guy. This Thank one. You. This person. All right. Hi, Jed. We hardly hawk. How are you doing? <laughs> Voluntold. Okay, thank you. Uh, MIG, M I G. That's Not... a vGPU feature. That's a new. Uh, I forget the uh, the acronym, but it's it's a new vGPU mode. I got it. Something managed, I imagine. But anyway. Um... <laughs> Looks like. Uh, is this Robert? Ryan, he's yeah, he's Ryan's, yeah from Nvidia, so he's definitely a good one to be looking at that for us. All right, so this this one is being somewhat yeah, being handled. Yeah, make reporter optional. Good first issue, also. All right, this this one's being addressed. CPU cache pass through config. Oh, interesting. Who can we with this? Dang it. The person that I would have come to mind first is um, not available right now due to world events. Uh, okay. Well, I believe, could you CC? Federico Fusemo, F F O S. I. Uh, uh, no. No, that's Francesco Romani. He is F O. Yeah. F O S. Okay, just one. This uh, gentleman. No. <laughs> F O S, not F O F. This job. Yeah. I guess that's him. Hi, Federico. <laughs> Hi, Thank you. Sorry, I'm much better with people's uh, internal SIDs than their external ones. Apparently, they're good. Oh, panels. yes. No, there, there are a number of words that I've only read and I pronounce out loud incorrectly all the time. All right. <laughs> Likewise, names. All right. Register hooks in the uh, VM lifecycle. Brand new, okay. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to pull a Daria and let the ball fly right by as I stand there motionless. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, then moving on. Sorry for the pop culture reference for those from other continents. I didn't catch it, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, VM label annotation label uh, values for new random virtual machine. Can I create a new VM? I don't think he filled out what he expected. Is this a bug about a test? About an end-to-end test? It's like a feature request. It's like, why don't we, right? I think I, I commented on this uh, and asked him to open a PR if like, it requires a PR, not uh, an issue. Ah, OK. Yeah. Thank you, Edward. We'll move on. Final one.
Yipes. Yipes. Uh, comment, comment. Oh, somebody's. Hey, I think some would be yours, man. There's definitely interaction on this one. <laughs> All right, moving on. Since we're getting so close to the top of the hour. All right, that is bug scrub. Uh, I don't know if we addressed all these. I guess we should take a quick peek again, just to be sure. Did the right thing. Yeah, we took care of this one. Yeah, actually, so I didn't even have to go through all this. We took care, we looked at this one. Yeah, I think we took care of all this. We're good. Yeah, we we looked at this one as well. And yeah. Not assigned. This one's, oh, we did not look at this one. Transfer this issue, oh, from elsewhere. All right, let's take a look at this one. Bug report, bug. VM not starting, 110 alpha. Vert launcher pod crashes. Downgrading to 1000 works. Oh. Anybody want to grab this one? Okay. Alpha, alphas have alpha results, but hopefully uh, it'll come out in testing. Flaky test flakes, and we're at the top of the hour, so let's just see if we can. Oh my. <laughs> I don't know how to address any of this. Any any uh any comments or or guidance from from our community? All right. Uh, uh, currently well, they are merged. Oh, approved. Approved. Yeah, I see a number of approvals. No, no, it's uh, it's merged the purpose. I could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. In that case, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your attendance and your participation. Uh, again, let Andrew know if I did a good job or a bad job, and he will or will not ask me to come back. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank, thank you. you. See you. Thank you. You're welcome.